Welcome back everyone. In this lesson we are going to be continuing on with selecting our units. In the previous lesson we set it up so that we can click on a unit to select it and then s click off of it to deselect it. Now in this lesson we are going to be working on group selecting units so we can then click and drag to select a wide range of units here. And as a matter of fact let's actually start by duplicating this unit a few times. So I'm just going to go control D, move them over here, control D, move them over there, control D, move them over there. So we now have a group of units. And since we have multiple units now, we need to select our player object and add these to our units list here. So I'm just going to drag and drop them in this array here because all units that we want to control or are recognized as ours need to be inside this player list right here. So like before, we can click play, we can select units. As you can see here, I'm selecting these different units, but we can only select one at a time. So what we're going to be doing now is setting up that box select so we can select, select, for example, all of these at the same time and then control them. Now, to begin with this, what we're going to be doing is setting up a UI um, to actually have this uh, square, which is going to be the uh, selection rec box. And what I'm going to do is go right click. I'm going to go UI canvas to create a new UI canvas here in the editor. And as a child of that canvas, I'm going to create a UI image. Now, to get a better view of this image, let's go into 2D mode here. Click the 2D button, press F to focus on the image, and there we go. If we look in the game view, we can see we have the image right here on screen. Um, but we don't want it like this, because right now, this image here is um, pretty much all white. So if we do hover it over on top of, let's make it a bit bigger. If we do hover over a unit, we can't really see what we're looking at. So we need to make this slightly translucent. So for the color here, I'm going to set this to about 255 uh, divided by 2. So about 128. That's what we're going to have. So we can see the unit and we can still see what we're selecting. Uh, let's rename this here to our selection box. And what we also want to do then is change a few things here in the rec transform. Right now, the actual... Um, anchoring is set to the center of the screen. So 0, 0 is in the center of the screen. And if you, if you look here at the position X and the position Y, these values will change based on where I move this. If I move it to the left, you'll see that it goes into the negative. And if I move it to the right, you'll see that it goes into the positive. Same with the Y. Vertical, it goes into the positive, And downwards, it goes into the negative. Now, we don't want it this way because uh, the way we're going to be setting it up with our mouse cursor and all that, uh, the way that screen position works, which is what our mouse cursor works in, uh, it's different than this. Zero, zero isn't the center of the screen. It's actually the bottom left of the screen. So we need to change this so that zero, zero for this uh, selection box here is actually in the bottom left corner of the screen. And to do that, we can just change the anchoring. So let's click on the anchor box here, and I'm going to set this here to bottom left. So now, as you can see, 0, 0 is down here in the bottom left, which is what we want, which is great. Okay, so I'm just going to move this back here. I'm going to deactivate it so it's not visible by default. And now let's go inside of our uh, unit selection script. And I'm going to start by adding in a new variable. This is going to be our public rect transform object, which is going to be our selection box. And we also need a few other variables. First of all, we need the start position for our click. So when we initially click down on the screen, we need to figure out what that position is. So we can then figure out how big, how wide we make the box. So I'm going to have a private vector2 for our start pos. And there we go. That's all we need for now. Uh, so down here in the update function, we are going to be adding in two more if statements. Right now, we have it for if the mouse is down. Then we need to figure out when the mouse is up so that we can then select the units that are inside the box. And we also need to know every frame that the mouse is clicked down so that we can then update the selection box. So here I'm going to go uh, for mouse up. This is done by going if input dot get mouse button up zero for the left mouse and for uh, mouse held down. This is going to be input get mouse button zero for the left mouse. Okay, so whenever we click the mouse button down, we want to first of all set the start position. So here we can go start pause equals input dot mouse position. 
So we're getting the first, posi first position of the mouse on the screen when we click down. And whenever the mouse is held down, what we want to do is update the selection box. So we want to basically make this selection box change its width, its height, its position to basically look as if we are dragging a box across. So down here, I'm going to create a new function called void update uh, the selection box. And this is going to send over a vector2 for the current mouse position. So up here in the if get, button, if get mouse button down, I'm going to call the update selection box, sending over the input dot mouse position. Okay, so down here in update selection box, uh, this function here is going to be called when we are creating a selection box. And what we want to do is basically enable the selection box. So if this selection box is currently disabled, we want to enable it. So we can go if exclamation mark selection box dot game object dot active in hierarchy. So if this is currently not active in the hierarchy, then we want to enable it. So selection box dot game object dot set active true. Okay. Um, now what we want to figure out is the width and the height of the box. What is the width going to be and what is the height going to be? Uh, the width is going to be the distance between the start position of the mouse and the current position of the mouse on the x-axis. And the height is going to be the distance between the two but on the y-axis. So here we can go float for the width. This is going to be equal to our current mouse position dot x, subtracting our start position dot x. And the height is going to be equal to the current mouse position dot y minus the start position dot y. Okay. Uh, now what we want to do is set the size of the selection box and then also set the position of the box. So first up, the size of the box is going to be basically the width and the height right here. Um, so what we can do is go selection box dot size delta to edit the width and the height of the box. This is going to be equal to a new vector 2 and for the width this is going to be the width and the height. Now a problem with this right now is that the width and the height here have a possibility of being into the negative. If our, if our start position is let's just say 0 or let's just say the start position is somewhere and, the, and we move our mouse to the left uh, this number here is going to go into a negative, so we want this to be positive. And a way to do that is by making an absolute. So with width here, we can make this a mathf.abs for absolute, and then enter in the width. So if this number is a negative, it'll just simply make it a positive number. Same for the height here, we can go mathf.abs, like so. Okay. Uh, now what we want to do is set the position of the box because this is also going to change as we increase, decrease, and modify the size of the selection rect. So to change the position, we can go selection box dot anchored position equals, and this is going to be our start position plus half of the width and half of the height. Because if we go back to the editor and we click on our selection box right here, you'll see that the pivot point, the center point, is in the middle of the box, so this is half of the box width away from the left, and it's also half the box height away from the bottom left here as well. So we need to add that difference onto the initial start position. So we can just go here equals start pos plus new vector 2 uh, width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. Okay, we got all listed up right here. Uh, now let's actually go and test this out inside of the editor. I think everything here should be pretty good, so let's go back inside the editor. Uh, let's disable this selection box right here. And on our player, let's drag in the selection box rect transform into the unit selection script. Press play, and we should see that we can then click and drag. And as you can see here, it's just like as you would see on your computer or in other RTS games as well. We can click, drag, uh, let go doesn't really change anything at the moment, we need to implement that still. But we can also click, drag here, and yeah. So this is the basics of actually getting this working. Now all we need to do is make it so that when we release, uh, this disappears, and all the units that are inside of this selection box get selected. So we're going to be working on that in the next lesson, and I'll see you all then.
Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we're going to be continuing on with our box selection. Uh, in the previous lesson, we set it up so that currently we can click and drag to visualize the box. Letting go doesn't do anything and it doesn't select the units yet, which is what we're going to be working on in this lesson. So let's open up our unit selection script right here, where we're working on the update selection box function. And what we want to do now is go up to our update function. And inside of here, we are going to be working on the get mouse button up uh, if statement right here. So when we let go of our mouse button, what we want to do is call a function that we'll create down here. And this is going to be called our void release selection box. So we can call that over here in get mouse button up, release selection box. And this is going to first of all um, disable the selection visual right here. And it is also going to uh, determine what units are inside of the box. So first of all, let's disable the box. So selection box dot set active false. Whoops. Selection box dot game object dot set active false. And what we want to do now is determine the min and the max for this object. We want to know the bounds of this. Um, the bounds of this um, basically selection box on screen and we're going to be storing this in two vector2 variables. First up we have a vector2 for the min and this is going to be the min for the x and the y. So what's the minimum x value? So what's the left hand side x value? And what's the minimum y value? So what's the bottom left y value? So this position here is basically going to be the bottom left of the selection box and this is going to be equal to our selection box dot anchored position and since this here is the center of the rectangle we need to subtract the width and the height divided by two so subtract the selection box dot size delta divided by two and then we also have our vector two for the max which is going to be the top left position of the box and this is going to be equal to our selection box dot anchored position so the center of the selection box and then we need to add on top of that uh, the width and height divided by 2 to get the top left. So plus selection box dot size delta divided by 2. Okay, so we've got the min and the max positions of this box. And with these, what we're going to be doing is looping through each of our units uh, and converting their world position into a screen position and then determining whether or not they are inside the bounds of these two values. So let's loop through each of the units. So we'll go for each uh, unit, unit in player dot units. So each of our player units here. What we want to do first of all is convert this unit here, which has a world position, a global world position, into a screen position. So here we'll have a vector three screen pos, and that's going to be equal to our camera dot world to screen point, and this can convert a world point into a screen point. The world point we want to convert is going to be our unit dot transform dot position. So now we have the unit as a screen position, and what we want to do with that is determine, okay, is the x position of this unit greater than the min x, and is the x position less than the max x? So we then know that vertically this unit is inside the selection box, then we need to go, okay, is this unit's uh, screen y position greater than the min y, and is it less than the max y? And with these four checks, we can then determine that, okay, this unit is inside of the selection box, so select it. Otherwise, just skip over it. So to do this, we can just go if our screen pos.x is greater than the min.x, and the screen pos.x is less than max.x, and the screen pos dot y is greater than min dot y and the screen pos dot y is less than the max dot y then what we can do is go selected units dot add unit like so okay so we got our unit selected here and then we can then toggle the selection visual on the unit so we can go unit dot toggle selection visual true okay there we go uh, it's probably a bit to get a hold of inside this function because it is quite large. I'm just going to add a comment up here explaining what it does. Uh, so pretty much we're disabling the selection box because we no longer to see it. We're getting the min and the max p 
positions on the selection box, so the bottom left and the top right positions of the box. Then we are looping through each of our units. We are converting our unit position to a screen position. And then we are basically determining here in this if statement whether or not this screen position of the unit is inside of our selection box. If so, we are then selecting that unit. Okay, so we've got that all set up. And pretty much for now, that should be all we need to do. Um, we can now go back inside the editor, wait for the scripts to compile. We can then press play. And what we should be able to do is just like before, as you can see, we can select the individual units. But if we have our box and let go, it disappears. Let's select this unit here. There we go, we got that one selected. Let's try select all of them. There we go. We can also select all the units. We can select these two over here. We can select these three. We can select all of them. We can select one. We can select this one. Select all of them. So yeah, as you can see here, we have our selection system up and ready to go. Now what we need to do is actually get these units moving. We need to be able to right click on the ground uh, and basically tell the units to move to that position. And that's going to be done in the next lesson where we start to work on our unit commander scripts. So I'll see you all then in the next lesson.